Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. Hello everyone, um, I am going to talk about uh, uh, a new subject that is called uh, biomaterials. I will be uh, giving 40 lectures, each lecture about 30 minutes of duration. Uh, biomaterials is of uh, recent origin I would say when compared to other areas of uh, biotechnology. Uh, it is encompassing several areas like uh, uh, medical biotechnology um, as well as materials and uh, instrumentation, analytical tools. So, it is a highly interdisciplinary subject and it is going to be very exciting and I believe that uh, the next uh, decade is going to be lot of research activities in the area of biomaterials and lot of uh, industries that will be uh, sprouting out uh, related to biomaterials. So, what is this uh, biomaterial? Uh, any substance, it could be a synthetic uh, substance or it could be a natural substance or combination of these two a synthetic and natural uh, used for some time as complete or as a part in the human uh, system. Okay. Um, the idea could be for treating uh, some problem in the human system or it is enhancing the function of something, it could be a diagnostic or it could be replacing any of the tissue organ or function that is called a biomaterial. Say for example, um, I am keeping a stainless steel implant inside the body. Okay. So, it is uh, trying to replace the broken bone or it is trying to help the bone to heal faster, then that is called a biomaterial. I am keeping a biosensor inside the body to monitor your glucose level as a function of time. Okay. So, then uh, that could be a biomaterial. Okay. It, uh, I could be keeping a, a, a calcium sulphate uh, or hydroxapatite to fill up uh, some uh, parts in the bone, then that is a uh, biomaterial. Okay. Sometimes uh, they keep a uh, uh, pacemaker inside the body, uh, so that it controls uh, the heartbeat that is called a uh, biomaterial. Um, sometimes they keep uh, uh, devices, so that the blood is, blood is pumped properly, because sometimes the heart does not work uh, to the full extent. So, it sort of uh, uh, augments the current heart, then that is called a, a biomaterial. Um, so, anything it could be a natural material or it could be a synthetic uh, polymer or metal or ceramic um, kept inside the body okay, for a short period of time. It could be for few hours like uh, your catheter, urinary catheter or it could be forever if there is a hip replacement that may last for um, many many years or it could be a stent inside the uh, cardiovascular system and that is expected to last forever. So, it could be very short duration, it could be a medium duration, it could be a very long duration that is called a biomaterial. Okay. So, biomaterial encompasses several uh, aspects um, of uh, material and it encompasses the entire body system. So, it can be as, sim as simple as a urinary catheter, it could be uh, slightly complicated as your uh, uh, glucose uh, sensor inside the body or it could be a permanent uh, fixture like your cardiovascular stent or stainless steel uh, um, implant uh, to replace a bone and so on actually. So, all these are biomaterials. And nowadays with a lot of cosmetic surgery that is coming into picture, um, uh, rehabilitation after an accident or uh, um, problems associated with the congenital, again uh, biomaterials are used. Biomaterials are used for replacing uh, uh, different parts uh, of the facial, so that uh, sort of it helps in the cosmetic, um, the implants in the uh, oral cavity they are again called uh, biomaterials. So, biomaterials encompasses a large number of uh, uh, material and various parts of the body which are being replaced or augmented. Sometimes these biomaterials are removed 
after a short period of time uh, or medium period of time or sometimes the biomaterials are kept inside the body and it is expected to degrade on its own or sometimes they are removed with a second surgery. Uh, for example, uh, they implant um, some drug eluting um, biomaterial, once the drug has been eluted the biomaterial may be removed with a small surgery. So, all these are called biomaterials, um, but please remember drug is not considered as a biomaterial ok, whereas uh, all other things uh, are considered as biomaterials like the examples I mentioned about ok. Um, so, another definition for biomaterial a biological or a synthetic substance which is introduced inside the body as part of an implanted medical device or used to replace an organ ok. Nowadays people are talking about artificial heart, artificial kidney, um, uh, diaphragm valves, cardiovascular uh, um, stents. So, all these are artificial devices which are kept to replace either a damaged uh, body part or a diseased body part or body part which has uh, um, been uh, damaged because of some accident and so on. So, all these have to do the bodily function ok. So, that means it has to do the bodily function. So, if uh, um, a, a joint is replaced with a metal joint the metal joint has to do the function of the original human joint ok and it has to last forever until the person is alive. So, biomaterials encompasses several areas of uh, um, research you know it could be medicine, it could be biology, it is chemistry, tissue engineering, material science, physics, so many different areas of uh, science and engineering uh, disciplines are uh, uh, encompassed as our is a part of this uh, area of biomaterial. So, anybody can uh, work in the area of biomaterials that means, uh, it is not possible for one person to become a real expert and introduce a product into the market you need the help of uh, several different disciplines um, to bring out a product from the bench right up to the bed of the patient. So, it is highly interdisciplinary and that is why I said uh, it is biomaterials research is going to be the most important research uh, field in the next uh, coming decades and there are going to be lot of companies um, who will be marketing, who will be researching uh, or bringing out products in the area of biomaterials and uh, I believe uh, I, that uh, India also will be in the forefront in the area of biomaterial research. Okay, so, there are many issues one need to consider when you are uh, having a biomaterial because the material is uh, kept inside the body whether it is uh, for a short period of time or a very long period of time. So, the material has to be biocompatible. What does this biocompatible means? So, when a foreign material is placed inside the body um, it should perform its duty within that host uh, for that particular application ok um, and it should be compatible it should not be uh, causing any toxicity or uh, uh, any harm to the host ok. So, if I keep a cardiovascular stent it should not cause inflammation it, it should not cause uh, any other adverse reaction uh, which may lead into a rejection of the material. So, biocompatibility is very very important when you design uh, yeah, material that has to be placed inside the body. Even um, you must have heard uh, that if uh, urinary catheters are placed inside the body uh, for passing of urine uh, after a few days um, the patient feels pain uh, sometimes infection develops and so on because there is a um, non compatibility between that material and the host. The next one is host response ok. What is the response of the host um, to the implanted material that needs to be thought of. Uh, sometimes the host response can change um, the way I respond to a biomaterial placed inside the body as against uh, you responding to the same biomaterial placed inside the body could be very different. For example, if you take uh, um, um, hip joints, these hip joints are made up of nickel chromium type of uh, material and uh, there is always possibility of uh, um, leaching out or wearing out of this material and entering the host. 
So, some patients may have uh, adverse reaction to these uh, metals of very low concentration. We are talking in terms of PPM, um, but still some patients may have adverse reaction to these uh, materials that is getting leached out, whereas some pers per patients may not have any adverse reaction. So, the host response can change from person to person for the same material. Uh, the response could be local, that means wherever it is placed inside the body, it could be local or it could be entire system. For example, if you take a polylactic acid, polylactic acid is a polymer, it is made up of lactic acid and uh, it is a well approved biomaterial, it is approved by the FDA that is Food and Drug Administration Authority of USA um, and it finds many application inside, uh, uh, inside the human body as a biomaterial. When this polylactic acid degrades, a uh, little bit of lactic acid is produced which is slightly acidic. So, there could be a very local acidity which may harm the cells which nearby, but if you take the entire human system then the acidity will not change, but in the very local environment there could be um, uh, acidity which may have a certain adverse uh, reaction on the cells um, or the tissues near where the material is placed. Okay. So, um, responses can be local, responses can be systemic. Okay. Sometimes uh, you place a cardiovascular stent, there could be inflammation in the region where it is placed, whereas rest of the body will not have any um, adverse reaction at all. So, uh, there is always difference between local and systemic. Okay. So, I want to show a couple of pictures of biomaterials, for example, uh, um, this is a fracture plate. Uh, these uh, uh, these pictures are got um, courtesy from CMC Velour in Tamil Nadu. So as you can see, there is a stainless steel rod placed um, here as a fracture uh, um, augmenting material uh, after a fracture, bone fracture. Okay. Um, now uh, they place a polymethyl methacrylate uh, uh, impregnated with the uh, uh, antibiotic, the antibiotic slowly gets released. So, it prevents uh, infection from um, and biofilm formation on the stainless steel material. In fact, uh, this is uh, this is the drug loaded polymethyl methacrylate beads. So, they are placed inside. So, um, so after a um, uh, fracture, they keep uh, these uh, stainless steel rod and they also keep a uh, drug loaded uh, polymethyl methacrylate beads. So, the drug gets slowly released. Uh, um, as a function of time and um, it prevents the infection uh, that means bacterial infection. It will also prevent the attachment of bacteria or the biofilm formation. Um, so, the stainless steel rod here is a biomaterial and uh, the polymethyl methacrylate beads also is a biomaterial. So, we need to consider all the um, aspects like biocompatibility, um, host response, uh, local response, system response, all these when we are designing these uh, um, biomaterial. Okay. We will talk about uh, all these much more in detail uh, later. Now, I want to show you another biomaterial. Okay. This is a uh, polyurethane urethral stent. Okay. This is a urethral stent made up of polyurethane. Polyurethane is almost like rubber, so it is very flexible. Uh, this is an x ray of that. So, this ureteral stent is placed okay, between the ureter uh, okay, and the bladder. Okay. So, um, it allows the urine to flow nicely uh, down to the bladder. Sometimes uh, there could be stones which may be blocking um, the ureter or sometimes there could be infection uh, which may be preventing the urine to flow. So, they place this ureteral stent as you can see here so that the urine flows nicely comes down to the bladder. So, this is a biomaterial, um, this is made up of uh, polyurethane, so it is very flexible and generally um, after a stone surgery, generally nowadays uh, stones are not uh, removed through operation, they may use uh, um, some ultrasound to break the stones. So, the stones, broken stones will come out through the urine, so it may take a couple of weeks or three weeks. So, they would like to have this ureteral stent placed inside uh, the ureter for about 4 to 6 weeks. So, this ureteral stent has to perform its duty 
that means it should be biocompatible, it should not cause any infection to the patient, uh, it should not break. Um, so, after 4 to 6 weeks the ureteral stent is removed, whereas in the previous case we are talking about a stainless steel implant um, which is uh, done after the fracture of the bone. So, the stainless steel implant is going to be there inside the body forever as long as the patient lives or alive. So, you see two different situation where uh, the stainless steel implant uh, stays inside uh, forever whereas, the ureteral stent has to stay only for 4 to 6 weeks um, and uh, look at the environments, the environments are very different. Here um, the polyurethane is facing the uh, urine environment that means we have several salts like uh, calcium oxalate um, okay, and we also are going to face uh, bacteria like E. coli, protease, metabolis. Uh, so, this is a very harsh environment. Whereas, if you go to this environment, um, there are no, generally no bacterial infection, there are no salts, you are talking only exposure to blood, plasma, uh, protein and so on actually. So, this environment is very different, whereas this environment uh, is very different. So, the biomaterial um, I showed you in the previous case is a stainless steel implant it has to stay for several years, but the environment is mild and um, it should be accepted by the host system. Uh, without causing any um, problems to the uh, human. In this second case, uh, we are talking about a polyurethane um, biomaterial which has to remain inside for 4 to 6 weeks only, uh, but the uh, environment is very, very harsh. Um, it should not cause uh, any salt precipitation which is found in the urine, it should not allow any bacterial infection to en get enhanced, um, especially bacteria like E. coli and protease mirabilis. Okay. So, there is no single answer um, in while designing a biomaterial, we need to understand um, in which location it is going to be placed, how long it is going to be placed, okay, whether it is days, weeks, years, months, um, what is its function it has to carry out, okay, because uh, for example, in these areas, uh, the two examples I showed you. Um, the biomaterials are inert, that means it, it does not have to carry out any function. But whereas, if you are talking about uh, diaphragm uh, valves, they have to move up and down, so it is carrying out some function. Or if you are talking about uh, um, joints, uh, the joints um, have to rotate and move in a three dimensional fashion, so it has to carry out some function. Um, so, the, when you design a biomaterial, we have to consider uh, the time duration the location, what is the function it is augmenting okay, and the type of materials we are going to use and so on actually. So, we need to consider quite a lot when you are designing bio biomaterial. So, there is no single design um, for biomaterial. So, when you consider all these aspects your design changes. That is why there is a lot of scope for doing research and that is why we need uh, uh, exper expertise from polymer chemists or a material scientist or a medical practitioners or physical chemists and so on actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, as I said biomaterials are being nowadays used uh, in large numbers uh, trying to replace all parts of the body. Dental implants, these have been very, very old going back to even thousands of years um, when uh, uh, many thousands of years back. Uh, human had their teeth replaced uh, with artificial material, so dental implants, tooth filling, okay, different types of fillings like mercury, like polymethyl methacrylate, acrylic acid and so on, vascular implants, okay, um, implants near uh, uh, the heart region, um, vascular grafts, um, you have uh, diaphragm valves, um, you are replacing different parts of the um, heart, okay. So, those are vascular implants. Drug delivery systems, okay. Um, we have uh, different types of drug delivery systems made up of biodegradable material. Um, the drug could be antibiotics, the drug could be uh, growth uh, enhancers uh, and so on, 
Now, bone fixing material, okay. Uh, so, if a bone is broken into two parts, uh, you are trying to fix it um, using bone nails or pines or wires. So, all these are biomaterials. Sutures, um, sutures after an operation, external sutures are there. Um, nylon was used originally, which is not biodegradable, but nowadays they use a lot of biodegradable uh, sutures. Um, internal sutures. So, they have again a biodegradable or bioresorbable uh, polymeric material. Bone defect filling, um, defects in the bone uh, which has come uh, due to um, birth defects or happened due to uh, accidents. They use different types of uh, fillings, okay. uh, materials like uh, polymethyl methacrylate, acrylic acids. Um, Okay, calcium sulfate, hydroxyapatite, hip joint prosthesis, bone plate. So, we have uh, joints um, where the joints gets replaced by uh, using uh, metals, okay, different types of metals, single metal, um, even uh, combinations of uh, two, three metals uh, with combinations of polymers, okay, bone plate, especially after uh, um, a orthopedic uh, or a bone graft, okay. then scaffolds for tissue engineering. Uh, this is one area which is growing quite a lot um, in the past 5 to 10 years. Um, you are trying to grow different cells on uh, surfaces, so they are called scaffolds and uh, these scaffolds are generally made up of uh, polymeric material. So, uh, these tissues once they are grown can replace uh, defective tissues or um, tissues which are infected inside the human body. Even your contact lens is a biomaterial because it is remaining inside uh, the eyes for a long period of time. So, it is in contact with the host system, it should not be causing any adverse reaction, it should not cause inflammation uh, and so on. So, contact lenses is a biomaterial. Catheters, okay, different types of catheters, urinary catheter, um, cardiovascular catheter. So, different types of catheters, they stay inside uh, the patient um, performing certain functions for a short period of time that means it could be hours or for a slightly longer period of time that means it could be um, weeks. Okay. So, all these are biomaterials um, and much much more actually. Okay. And as you can see each biomaterial um, has to perform certain function each biomaterial has, has a different location, each biomaterial stays inside the body um, maybe um, spanning uh, hours going right up to years. Okay. So, if you look at the biomaterial market, it is a huge business. Um, they estimate that by year 2020, uh, it could be 130 billion US dollars. Okay. So, these market is divided into based on type of material, it could be metallic material okay, like metallic means we are talking about titanium, stainless steel, chromium, nickel, it could be ceramic material okay, hydroxy apatite, calcium sulphate, uh, oxides, it could be polymeric material that means uh, uh, polymethyl methacrylate, polyethyl ketone, polylactic acid, polylactic acid, glycolic acid, it could be natural biomaterials. Okay, like glucon, um, cyclodextrins, hyaluronic acid. So, all these are um, chitosan, all these are called natural biomaterials. Okay. So, it is broken down in terms of uh, type of material or it is broken down in types of application. Applications for cardiovascular, it could be a cardiovascular stent, it could be a um, cardiovascular graft, it could be a patch, it could be a diaphragm. Um, orthopedic, it could be orthopedic plates, screws, joints, um, it could be dental. Okay. Dental means orthodontic application, teeth, jaw replacement, uh, it could be a plastic surgery. Plastic surgery is one area which is growing quite a lot, um, it could be plastic surgery related to uh, facial parts that means ear, nose, eyes, skins, okay. um, wound healing. Um, especially after a, a burn injury or could be chemical injury 
um, what type of biomaterials you use, wound patches uh, which will cure uh, um, the wound without causing adverse reaction or without uh, creating infection, neurological ok, anything that is related to the neuron, brain um, and so on. Tissue engineering um, is one area as I said is growing quite a lot nowadays. Um, can I grow tissues outside in the lab and then implant it inside the body? So, can I grow um, heart muscle tissues then patch up my heart? Can I grow bone uh, tissues and then replace uh, bone defects? Okay. Can I grow neuronal tissues and then replace some uh, uh, defects in the neuronal region? Can I grow uh, tissues related to um, okay, orthopedic? or uh, ophthalmologic and so on actually ok. So, that is tissue engineering. Then comes ophthalmology uh, like your contact lenses, ocular lenses um, ok, all these come under ophthalmology. So, the biomaterial market uh, is broken down in terms of application ok and they are broken down in terms of material. So, in the application you may have different types of material. For example, if you look at uh, the uh, orthopedic you can have stainless steel implants, titanium screws or polylactic acid uh, uh, resorbable uh, screws or you can have a drug delivery system with PLGA. So, you can have combinations of uh, um, materials also in each of these uh, applications. So, both are possible. So, testing of biomaterials is also very important just like uh, in drug uh, discovery once a drug has been discovered they go through a lot of uh, testing. It goes through animal testing, human testing, uh, human testing stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. So, biomaterials also um, has to undergo a lot of uh, testing processes. So, you may have a physical and mechanical testing. So, if it is a diaphragm valve it has to open close. So, it has to have certain tensile strength, flexural strength. Um, then biological testing. Um, is it uh, biocompatible, um, is it uh, causing any toxicity, any genotoxicity. Then in vitro assessment that means uh, using laboratory instruments or using laboratory cell lines. In vivo assessment that means uh, um, using uh, animals, maybe rabbits, maybe guinea pigs, even larger animals like dogs or sheep that is in vivo. Then functional assessment. So, if you are talking about uh, um, a yeah, artificial valve, it has to open and close every uh, few seconds uh, 100,000 times. So, can I do that and see whether it really works. Then comes clinical assessment ok. So, here the clinician um, comes into picture and they have a look at it, maybe they can test it out on uh, volunteer patients and then see whether it performs its duty. So, lot of assessments lot of testing has to be done on biomaterials before they are really introduced into the market. It is almost like a testing of drugs. You need to go through um, a rigorous testing, physical, mechanical, biological, in vitro, in vivo, then clinical testing before it is actually introduced to the market. So, uh, the time duration could be several years just like a, a drug testing. Okay. So, you have to keep that in mind. So, one cannot directly um, bring a product from the lab right into the um, patient bed. It has to go undergo a lot of testing before it is approved. Okay. Um, so, there are a large number of steps involved in the product development of uh, biomaterial okay. exactly like drug discovery. Uh, so, you may as soon as you try to decide on a base material it could be a polymer, it could be a ceramic, it could be a metal or it could be a combination of that ok. So, we mix it them and prepare the material. Then uh, the material needs to be modified into this on the surface so that it becomes biocompatible ok that is called the surface modification ok. Once uh, that is done uh, it goes into in, in vitro testing, um, in vitro testing may like I said involve cell line work, it may involve looking at uh, physicochemical testing, 
we may look at the mechanical properties like tensile strength, specific gravity, um, hardness, okay, viscosity depending upon the type of material. Then it goes into in vivo testing, uh, when we talk about in vivo it could be animals, different types of animals, okay, um, small animals, large animals. Then we need to make the product into the desired shape. For example, if you are talking about a, um, a, a hip uh, joint, then it should have a, a ball like shape and a socket like, the socket may be made up of some material, the ball may be made up of material. So, the product shape formation is there and then again you need to test it out in the animals to see whether it performs well in the animals. And uh, in some cases we may have to include electronics also. For example, uh, if you are talking about uh, uh, devices which uh, hel help uh, the performance of the heart. For example, there is something called uh, ventricular assist device which uh, will help in pumping of the blood because patients uh, whose uh, heart cannot pump blood of enough uh, quantity or rate, these devices are incorporated or embedded inside the body. So, those devices require power. So, you need to have an electronics embedded into that. If you are going to have a biosensor implanted inside the body, it needs to send out signals to the external uh, device. So, there has to be some electronics in that. And then once uh, the entire material is prepared uh, comprising of uh, the both uh, the material as well as the electronics, it may have to be tested on human volunteers okay. and then finally, the material goes into marketing and product um, launching. Okay. So, lot of steps are involved uh, when one is talking about uh, bringing a biomaterial right from the lab uh, into the uh, bed. Okay. Um, lot of testing, physical, mechanical, um, chemical, biological testings are carried out. That is why it is uh, extremely interdisciplinary area um, where we talk about uh, experts from different areas, biological sciences, mechanical sciences, chemical sciences. Then when you bring it to um, in vivo testing, we need the help of clinicians. Okay. Um, so, again a different uh, discipline is coming into picture. When uh, the biomaterial involves some electronics, then we need uh, help from the electronics uh, engineers and then finally, uh, it goes into um, clinical trials and finally, into marketing. So, the whole area of biomaterial um, is extremely interdisciplinary and we need to have uh, um, support from various disciplines if you want to launch uh, a product successfully. Okay. So, we will uh, continue in the next class. Thank you very much.